Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest stars Diana Highland, Stuart Moss, Dick Van Patten, special guest star Gary Collins. Tonight's episode, Deadly Reunion. Don't rub it in. I mean, you're just very lucky people. While you're on the slopes at Aspen, I'm down here worrying about who gets seated at the best table. Right, Nora? Oh, anything you say, Vince. Uh, listen, everybody, listen. Now hold it down, will you please? I want to thank all of you uh, for coming to my home tonight to help me celebrate the third anniversary of Lorenzo's. That's right, three years. That's a lot of lasagna, right? <laughs> Anyway, we must be doing something right, uh, because the National Gourmet Society just named Lorenzo's one of the top ten restaurants in all of California. Not bad, huh? <laughs> so my thanks to all of you who've helped us get where we are. Oh, and uh, particularly my personal thanks to the greatest maitre d' in the business, Vince Bradford. <laughs> well, that's it, everybody. That's it. Enjoy. They didn't say anything about giving you the partnership. Yeah, I heard. Aren't, aren't you going to say anything to him? Well, I'm ready, Nora. But Vince, you just can't keep on letting Wait, him break. I'm ready, Nora. Dita, you have just got to have a taste of the quiche Lorraine. It's great. Oh, everything looks so yummy. I don't know where to start. Funny, I was about to use the very same words. Uh, uh, uh. Careful, my dear. Food is just a hobby with Rick. Women are his career. There you go, trying to hurt my feelings again. Your feelings? Oh, Rick, don't make me laugh. Ooh, what's her problem? Just a guess, but I think I'm her problem. That's my uh, wife. Would you excuse me a moment? Hi. You really look terrific tonight, Edie. Oh, thank you. Do I know you? I'm Carl. <laughs> Carl Fenton, head waiter at Rick's place. Oh, sure, the head waiter. Thanks, Carl, but I don't need anything. Hey, Nora, get happy. It's a party. That little speech you made tonight. You forgot something, didn't you, Rick? I don't know, did I? My husband's partnership in the restaurant. You promised you were going to announce it tonight. It's too nice a night to talk about business. Come on, let's take a walk. Rick. Come on, loosen up, enjoy. Partnership? Are you still hopping on that? You never meant to give Vince that partnership. Just been using me. Get off it, Nora. You love being used, so why don't you admit it? You rotten pig! You rotten pig! <laughs> Going back to the party, Nora. You broke a tooth. Next time I'll break your neck. You're finished, Vince. You're fired. Get Give me your fanfare. All right, ladies, 
and gentlemen, here she is, the delicious, the lovely, the beautiful Dee Dee Danvers. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the climax of tonight's entertainment, lovely Dee Dee here is going to brave the icy ocean and go swimming. Let's go! are already calling it accidental death. They say my brother slipped on the rocks, hit his head, then drowned. And you don't think that uh, your brother died that way, Mr. Lorenzo? I just can't buy it. Rick lived on that stretch of beach for years. Those rocks were his front yard. Even with a skin full of booze, he could scramble around them like a mountain goat. Well, accidents will happen. Do uh, you know of any reason that someone may have wanted your brother dead? Sure. Plenty of reasons. For one thing, Rick liked to play around. A lot. And then there was the way he ran that restaurant of his, which I put up most of the money for, by the way. Here you are. Oh, thank you, Penny. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, the way he ran it? I understand it's a gold mine. It is. But Rick had the talent for getting the best people in the business to work for him. But uh, he did it by stringing them along, making promises he never meant to keep. Made for a lot of bad feelings, believe me. Well, I can see where it might make somebody mad enough to quit, but uh, not kill the boss. Oh, yeah? Well, then tell me, why was he out there around the rocks when there was a party going on in his house? The only reason I could figure, he was with someone. You have anyone in mind? No, but a couple of people were seen coming from that direction. His wife, widow, I mean, for one. And, oh, yeah, the maitre d' at the restaurant, Prince Bradford. Is there anyone else you suspect? I can't come up with any names. But Rick left a long trail of unhappy women after they drop him for whoever was next in line. Well, I uh, guess that is sufficient reason for me to look into this for you. Good. Very nice meeting you, Betty. Oh, thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. And I expect to be hearing from you. Yes, just as soon as I have anything to report. Thank you. Have it on your mind, Carl. Yeah, we gotta talk, Vince. We'll wanna wait till we get inside. Later, Carl. I can't believe it. How many years has it been, Betty? Too many. Oh, Vince, how are you? Well, I'm a little shook up. <laughs> I'm sorry. But other than that, I'm okay. How about you? You look fantastic. You always did know exactly what I wanted to hear. This is great. <laughs> Just great. 
Uh, I guess I'm being a little dumb. You just didn't show up here by accident, did you? Well, what is it? Well, I was concerned about you, Vince. About me? Why? Well, there seems to be some question about Rick Lorenzo's death. My father-in-law is a private detective. He's been hired to investigate. Is that right? Is there some place we could go and talk? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Not here. I, I know some place. Let's have a drink. I think I could use one. <laughs> <laughs> mind talking to you at all, Mr. Jones, but I am just a bookkeeper around here. Nobody ever tells me anything. Well, I really wanted to see Vince Bradford, but it uh, seems that my daughter-in-law just drove away in a car with him. What kind of a fellow is Vince, Mr. Overton? Vince? Nice guy. One of the halfway decent men around this place. And I sure am glad to see him get everything that Rick promised him. What's that? Well, I guess it's no secret now. It just hasn't been announced yet. But this morning, Rick's widow had a meeting with me and Vincent. He's getting a partnership and a promotion to general manager. Is that a fact? Sure. Hey, how about some coffee? No, thanks. You know, with Rick gone, Vince is the only man qualified to keep this place going. You ask me, I think he's long past due for everything he's getting. Listen, if it weren't for Vince, Lorenzo's would be nothing but a glorified hash house. The maitre d' makes that much difference? Oh. Vince did. Mostly on account of his wife, Nora. She's society girl, you know? Has a lot of rich, jet-set friends. With all those connections, uh, wouldn't you think they'd open up a place of their own? Oh, no. It takes a lot of bread to get a big restaurant like this off the ground. Sounds like Rick Lorenzo's accident it was a big break for Vince, didn't it? Barnaby. I thought you'd be out. I was out. Been back for some time. Went over to that Lorenzo restaurant. On the way back, I dropped in on Lieutenant Biddle. Oh, uh... Well, I, uh... I just had to run a, an errand. Uh... What'd you find out from John? Well, I managed to talk him out of a copy of the police report, along with, uh copy of the coroner's findings. I even got an x-ray of the victim's skull. Anything? Well, there was a fracture in the back of the skull. The uh, lips were cut and one tooth chipped. Well, couldn't that have happened when he fell on the rocks? That's what the police think, but uh, I don't see how a man who was churned around among those rocks wouldn't be covered with bruises. What are you thinking, Barnaby? I'm thinking that the name Vince Bradford keeps cropping up in funny ways. Arno Lorenzo said was that Rick liked to string people along with promises. Vince was strung along in spades. Now, uh, after Rick's accident, uh, Vince is in charge of the restaurant. Well, that's ridiculous. Just because... You saw me at the restaurant, didn't you, today? Vince. I thought that was you. But why didn't you just come out and ask what I was doing there? You know, I don't pry into your private affairs. I know, I'm sorry. It's just that, well, I, I used to know Vince Bradford. Well, we, we were in college together. We're good friends. And when you say that the investigation is pointing to him, I don't believe it. I don't believe that Vince Bradford could be a murderer. 
For your sake, Betty, I hope he isn't. told you, we got to talk. Nice place, Vince. Real nice. Don't get comfortable, Carl. You take a quick turn around and then out. What's with you? Is this your idea of a gag? That's some short fusing idea, Vince. Hasn't it bought you enough trouble for a while? What are you talking about? Vince, baby, I was there up on the rocks that night. I saw and I heard the whole thing. <laughs> you saw? There's nothing to see. You mean before Rick fired you for belting him in the mouth? Or after? I don't think the cops would call that nothing, do you? Look, there wasn't anything after that. I walked away then. Maybe. How do you know he didn't collapse after you left? You hit him pretty hard, Vince. That's still manslaughter, right? For sure, you'll lose your job. Maybe even do some time. What are you after, Carl? How about the maitre d' job, now that you're moving up to manager? That's it. And a little bonus. You know, to show good faith. $5,000, Vince, by tonight. Come on, you gotta be kidding. Would I kid my employer? <laughs> by tonight, Vince. Those bookies are squeezing me. I can't wait. Oh, Carl, I didn't know you were here. Just leaving, Mrs. Bradford. Bye now. Bye. Vince, I was listening. I heard it all. We're, we're going to have to find the money, pay him somehow. Vince, didn't you hear what I said? I didn't kill Rick, Nora. Carl said he saw the entire thing. I didn't thing. kill him! Okay, please, just, just don't yell, okay? Uh, what about the money? Are you gonna pay him? I don't have it. I know, Carl, he's gonna make trouble. Oh, Vince, after everything you've worked for, he's just... Nora, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll figure something out. Oh, come on, Vince, I know you. You're not gonna take care of Maybe I could go to Carl. No, I'll go to him, and I, I can put him off for a little while. Nora. Nora, you stay out of this. For once in my life, you let me handle it! Betty. Hey there, I need another drinky. I have to talk to you, Vince. It's very important. Sure. What's the matter? I was worried about you. Barnaby's on his way over here. He wants to see you. Betty, I didn't expect to find you here. Well, I wanted to pave the way. I mean, Vince and I are such old friends. Oh, Vince, this is my father-in-law that I told you about, Barnaby Jones. How do you do? Mr. Bradford, I was hoping to have a talk with you, but you're a pretty hard man to pin down. Well, things have been kind of hectic around here since Rick died, and uh, tonight's no exception. This shouldn't take long. Could we use your office? Go ahead, Vince. I promise he won't use his rubber hose on you. <laughs> well, sure. Come on, I'll show you the way. So you and your wife stepped out on the beach to get a little air just as Rick left the party. About the same time. I didn't say we left with him. No, I don't think I did either. Well, anyway, once you're on the beach, Rick uh, started out alone toward the rocks, and you and your wife went in the other direction. That's right. And we didn't see Rick again until they fished him out of the water. You see, well, that's very clear. Thank you very much for all your help. Sure. Glad to. I see you skinned your knuckles pretty badly. Oh, that's nothing. I must have uh, been there playing handball down at the gym. Maybe you ought to wear gloves when you play handball. 
Good night, now. Good night. I told you tonight, or I call the cops. And I told you you'd have to wait till tomorrow. Or you call the cops, Carl, if that's what you want to do. But that won't get you off the hook with those loan sharks you're into, will it? OK. Good night. Good night, fellas. Good night, Merle. Tomorrow night for sure, there's no more stalls. for the night. Uh, Carl, it's uh, Nora Bradford. Would you let me in, please? Your old man just left. You missed him by a couple of minutes. I know that. I was waiting for him to leave. Uh, I wanted to see you. Yeah? That's the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> you uh, care to step into my parlor? <laughs> Set the spider to the fly. <laughs> Over here. Here, I've got some brandy. 30 years old, Napoleon, see? I've got good taste, too. An expensive taste. It's a little too expensive for me, Carl. Oh, come on, who are you kidding? Hey, I'm not kidding anybody. I really don't have any money now. And, and whatever Vince makes on that partnership deal, well, that's going to be a long time in the future. Uh-uh, no sale. Either the money gets paid to me or the whistle gets blowed by me. You do that? You go to police and destroy Vince and me? Sure. With Vince busted, I still come out with something. I'm a sense to get the maid of D's job that way. <laughs> Won't you change your mind, Carl? Honey, what you said helped make up my mind. I'm not going to let you get away with it. Now, either you leave Vince alone, or I'm going to have to stop you. <laughs> I swear I will, Carl. <laughs> You gotta be kidding. Come on, give me that thing. Come on in. I'm just driving around, and the next thing I know, I'm looking you up in the phone book. I'm sorry if I woke you up. Oh, well, if you must know, I, uh, I wasn't all that sound asleep. It was turning into a restless night. Oh, well. <laughs> what? I just thought of something. What? Do you still like hot cocoa in the wee hours? What? Cocoa? Yeah. Well, sure. Right? Good. Come on. I'll give you some. I don't think I've had any cocoa since, uh... Since we went our separate ways? You know, that's probably the dumbest thing I ever did in my life, letting you get away. Well, that's very flattering, Vince. But I don't think it's altogether accurate. I seem to recall that it was not I who was doing the getting away. I don't know. It just all seemed to get away from me. You, the baseball career, everything. And I was the guy who had everything going for him, remember? Couldn't miss. Well, that's how I... <laughs> the yearbook and I figured it anyway. Well, I sure missed. I missed everything. No, I, uh, I think you're being kind of hard on yourself. Do you? 
Did you ever hear why I didn't make it playing ball? My temper. I got into a beef with an umpire and I broke his jaw. <laughs> that was it. End of baseball career. Seems I remember something like that. But you didn't hear about Nora's money, did you? Well, once my baseball career was finished, I decided I was going to be an overnight millionaire. The only trouble was that Nora's family fortune had kind of stretched about as far as it could go. So when I finally got my hands on it, it just dried up and blew away. I'm sorry. No, I didn't know that. Vince, didn't you love her? I don't know. Maybe I... Maybe I thought so then because I wanted to. But now I feel like I married Nora because of her looks, her family, her money. And I've just kind of used them all up. Well, I think you've been letting things wear you down. I suppose we should have realized that life couldn't possibly have fulfilled all the promises that it seemed to be making to you. Listen, that doesn't mean that you personally ruined everything all by yourself. I mean, listen, from where I stand, it doesn't look to me as though uh, your life is ruined at all. Well, things have seemed a lot brighter during the past couple of days. <laughs> hey, you haven't said anything about yourself. I mean, I know I haven't given you the chance. Well, after... Uh a while. I met Tal. We were married. He was really a sweet man. Vince. We had a couple of beautiful years together. And then he was killed. That was it. How long ago? Three years now. Anybody since then? Oh, <laughs> no, no, not really. Oh, heavens, I, I don't have the time, really. All the work that Barnaby has me doing, I... Oh, I meet a lot of interesting people. Oh, you know, it's a life. It sounds lonely. Mm-mm. Nope. Not lonely at all. No, I'm doing work that I never... I never dreamed that I'd really be. All right, yes. It's lonely. Hello. Uh, no, I, I'm awake, Barnaby. What's wrong? Uh, Betty, I just got a call from Lieutenant Biddle. There's been a shooting out at Lorenzo's restaurant. They're trying to locate Vince Bradford. You haven't heard from Vince tonight, have you? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, I'm on my way out there now. You want me to swing by and pick you up? Uh, yes, if you would. Uh, I'll be ready when you get here. Right. Is it? There's been a shooting at the restaurant. The police want to talk to you. His name is Carl Fenton, head waiter. Looks like somebody came in, robbed him, and shot him when he tried to resist. And passed up a rather expensive looking ring, wouldn't you say? Rather careless robber. They're probably a hopped up amateur. Or somebody who wanted it to look like a robbery. Fix the time of death. Yeah, the coroner thinks it was probably around 1 a.m. Oh, who's this now? I'm Vince Bradford, the manager here. What's going on? Oh, well, Mr. Bradford, where have you been for the past two hours? I've just been driving around. I, I felt restless. I didn't want to go home. So you were just driving? That's right. Did you stop anywhere? Talk to anybody? No, I'm afraid not. Now, would you mind telling me what's going on? There's been a murder. Carl Fenton. He worked for you. Carl? Yes, he... He was the last one here when I left tonight. We'd like you to come downtown with us, Mr. Bradford, make a statement, answer a few more questions. Why? Am I a suspect or something? 
Vince, I'm sorry, but I had to tell him what I heard. Yeah. Well, should I get a lawyer or something? If you want, but nobody's accusing you, Mr. Bradford. I'm not arresting you, it's just that, uh, well, I wouldn't say that you're 100% in the clear, you understand? Mm -hmm. Will you come along? Yes. I mean, why not? It's the end of a perfect day. Barnaby, I want to stay with you on this case. Anything that I can do to help, I want to do it. Even if it starts coming around strongly to Vince? Yes. You want to go meet Mrs. Bradford? Volunteer work at a rest home. She would be that type. Makes it tougher not to like her. Yeah. Well, Betty, if you want to stay in the car, you may. Oh, no, no. I said I'd stay with you. I didn't say I'd like it, though. It's your game, Fred. Would you excuse me for a few minutes? I was watching for you, Mr. Jones. It was very considerate of you to drive out. I I'd hate to miss one of my two afternoons a week here. Not at all. Uh, it's just as easy for me to talk to you here as it would have been in your apartment. You must be Betty. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet you for the longest time. It's nice to meet you, Nora. Uh, I wonder if we could uh, try to clear up this gun business. Uh, your husband told Lieutenant Biddle last night that he owned a pistol of the same caliber as the one that killed Carl Fenton. But you told the police that the gun had been stolen. Uh, you want to tell me a little about that? Oh, yes, the gun. Uh, well, I'm afraid it was my fault. I, uh, I, I went out of the apartment for a few minutes and I left the door unlocked. And uh, when I came back, all the drawers were open and the gun was gone. <laughs> I felt so stupid about it. I knew Vince would be angry, so I, I didn't tell him. I, I just thought I would replace it with another. Oh, it's a shame you did that, Ms. Bradford. Uh, you should have reported it. Uh, the police might even have been able to recover it for you. Well, I know it was a dumb thing. I'm sorry. Uh, is there anything else, Mr. Jones? Actually, I was more interested in pinpointing whether anyone had a reason for wanting Rick Lorenzo dead. Anything you can tell me about that? No. Uh... I can't think of anything. Uh, uh, though my husband worked for Mr. Lorenzo, we, we never saw him, uh, socially, I mean. He must have been aware of his reputation. I understand he was uh, quite a chaser. He means there were other women, Mrs. Bradford. Yes, yes, I know. Well, I, I have heard some gossip to that effect. You, you know how those things are. Only gossip? You're such an attractive woman, I'm surprised he didn't make a pass or two in your direction. There's only one man in my life, my husband. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Something's bothering you, Betty. What is it? Only that Nora's too good to be real. I think she only meant one thing she told us. And that was the part about Vince being the only man in her life. You didn't buy that stuff about the stolen gun. Hmm. No, I'll call it women's intuition if you like, but uh, I think she was lying. And I'm afraid she was lying to protect Vince. That seems like a reason she'd lie, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you something about last night. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I want to. When you called and asked if I had heard from Vince, I lied. He was in the apartment with me. I'm sorry. Was he there at the time that Carl Fenton was killed? No. 
He came by later. Barnaby, we were more than just friends in college. We were in love, planning to get married. Until Nora came along. I see. I was so positive that he couldn't have killed anyone. I mean, I really believe. I wanted to. Now I, I'm afraid. You don't have to give up on the guy yet. Not until after I sort out who Lorenzo's girlfriends were. I think I have an idea of how to do that. Jones, syndicated press service. I'm so glad that you could meet me here today. My goodness, I've been hearing such delicious things about your career. Waiter, double martini, please. As a matter of fact, I was talking about you just the other day with Rhoda Harris. Rhoda and I are, as they say, friendly competitors. Really? Yes. She uh, gave me a nice little hot item about you. And though I don't usually do those kind of stories much anymore, and Rhoda is improving her image, well, I thought I'd find out how you feel about the old-fashioned tattletale kind of publicity, hmm? Uh, well, you know what they say. Just so you spell my name right. I'm so glad you feel that way, because I'd like to do a nice little story on poor dear Rick Lorenzo. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh that might not be so good. But I... Uh, well, it's just that the studio I'm under contract to, well, they kind of laid the law down to me. So if you come out now with an item about Rick and me, well, I could get into a lot of trouble. I mean, after all, he is dead and everything. Dear, that is a bit sticky. You see, my problem is that, well, when a man like Rick passes away, well, I mean, they're news for a few days, and, well, you have to cash in right away, or the interest value goes. Oh, I really wish I could help, but... Perhaps you can, my dear. Then I can help you later on. I must do this item about Rick. Perhaps I could uh, ask you about uh, the other women in his life. Could you help me there? Oh, funny you should mention that. You know, one night we had a date, and then he broke it. No explanation. I uh, got suspicious. So I drove out to this motel Rick used to take me to. Uh, the little love nest, huh? Right. Isn't it too square for words? <laughs> but sure enough, there was Rick's car. And a minute later, she showed up, walked right in. I mean, you could tell it wasn't the first time she'd been there, either. Well, come on, dear. Give me a name. An item isn't an item without a name. The trouble is, it was kind of dark, and, and she kind of kept her head down. Sneaky, you know? Uh, I'm pretty sure she was a blonde. Does that help? Well, it's going to have to do, as long as I have the name of the motel. <laughs> That was going to be fun. I wound up feeling depressed. Well, I guess maybe even Hedda Hopper had her bad days. <laughs> what next? I'd better go over and check out that motel Dee Dee mentioned, see if I can find a name for the sneaky blonde lady. You want to come along? Well, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is go to the restaurant and try to get Vince to open up about what happened on the beach. I thought the restaurant was closed today. Well, when I talked to Vince, he said that he was going in to uh, do some paperwork. Could you drop me in my car? Sure, I'll catch up with you later. Listen, this is a respectable place. If the manager found out I told you about our guest's doings... <laughs> nope, not her. She's a stranger, too. Oh, yeah. Now, here's a familiar face. One of our uh, Mrs. Smiths, the happy one. The other was kind of shy and sad. That her? Yep. 
That's the one. Betty, what a surprise. Am I interrupting? No, no, by all means interrupt. Come on in. Uh, how about a drink? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, you go ahead, please. All right. Well, make yourself at home. Well, what brings you down here? You haven't told me what happened that night on the beach, the night of the party. I mean, what really happened, have you? Vince, please trust me. I am on your side. Uh, you maybe. But what about your father-in-law? He is too. Because I told him I don't believe you killed anyone. Okay. I followed Rick and Nora down to those rocks on the beach that night. And when I found them, he was pawing her and she was trying to fight him off. And I yanked him around and I belted him. I mean, I was pretty steamed at him anyway. He'd reneged on a promise he'd made me. But that was it, Betty. One shot to the mouth. That's all that happened. He was alive and yelling when I walked away from him. You walked away? Yes. What about Nora? She'd left a few minutes earlier. Vince, Nora loves you. I think she would do anything to protect you. I, I mean, I'm convinced of that. Betty, what are you driving at? What did you and Carl Fenton argue about last night? Uh, well, he'd, he'd seen me fight with Rick, and he was trying to shake me down. Did Nora know that? Well, yes. When Carl Fenton was shot, where was Nora? I don't know. When I left here, uh, I went home and her car wasn't in the car for it. I just didn't feel like facing an empty apartment. That's when I came over to your place. Betty, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Why? You don't want to face what you're thinking? That Nora killed Rick and Carl? Vince. Don't you think this conversation has gone on long enough, Vince? Nora, what are you doing? I'm trying to keep you from doing what you always do. Ruining everything. Me? What did I ruin? You didn't have to charge in like the cavalry that night. I mean, I could have handled Rick. I mean, he would have come around and given you that partnership. I just... I needed more time. No, no, one manly punch, and, and you ruined it all. Until you saved the situation by killing Rick and Carl. That is what happened, isn't it? You have to understand something about Vince. I mean, he's got all those lovely muscles, and he's very charming, but uh, underneath it all, he's just a little boy. He needs lots and lots of help. And that's what I do. I help my husband. It's a full-time career. It's the only career I've, I've ever wanted or cared about. I believe that, Nora. Vince, I have to call the police. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Betty. Put the phone down. For God's sake, Nora. Thank you, Nora. You've just told Vince everything he needs to know. I mean, the gun? Oh, we'll get over this. And he'll stick by me because I take such good, good care of him. Hello? Barnaby, she has a gun! you. Oh, Vince, I didn't want to hurt you. Oh, God, not you. Please forgive me, please. Shut 
you told me, baby.